Hey, things are not what you think. Yeah, there's always something you don't know. <coughs> Welcome to Joey's Real Talk. <laughs> talking about today, mm, we're talking about extracurricular activities for students. Here in Taiwan, the, the students, they spend a lot of time in school already. Sometimes when they get off school, they have to go to cram school. They have to go to all sorts of, I don't know, piano lessons, violin lessons. Uh, Asian parents specifically really love to pack uh, their itineraries uh, daily, and I so we're going like, to. It's like they spend more time on extracurricular activities than they do on school. Right. Like physically in in school. But okay, but would cram school be considered extracurricular? I don't know. Like uh, I wonder. It's not well, fun. <laughs> you can not you can graduate without it, right? So I I, I guess it's I extracurricular. Suppose. Okay. I mean, the thing is, I I correlate extracurricular activities to stuff that are like not academic, right? Like sports or the choir, fun stuff. the fun <laughs> stuff. But I I would argue a cram school is not extra. I'm like. Would you say getting a, getting tutored is an extracurricular activ activity? Mm, depends on and what, I guess. Uh, I mean, if you're getting tutored and in, 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 in a school for, subject, in, in a school subject, in math, so that you can pass at yeah. in school, I, well, I would say so. Well, let's ask our mm. let's ask our interns later. Okay, okay. And if you want to share anything with us at any point, please to uh, just type them down in uh, the comment section on our Facebook because we're Facebook living uh, this segment right here. Okay, so this story starts with the CEO of a large company here in Taiwan. Uh, he has about 20,000 uh, mm -hmm. followers on his Facebook page, and he posted uh, on the 4th of July this week, or this month, uh, a schedule for his son, or the, his kids, and uh, what they have to do uh, for, uh, for their summer activities. Mm -hmm. And it basically looks like a full schedule that goes from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you want to take a look at this schedule, we will uh, put the sheet that we printed out in front of our Facebook Live camera. So go take a look. Um, and I think Leslie and Nancy and Philip, you've all look, looked yes. at it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, some of the things that are on it, uh, Nancy, can you give us a little brief breakdown of what this itinerary well, looks like? Well, the day starts at 8.30 when they have English class for two, for two hours. Ooh, that's a lot of English. Um, or they have... Oh, why does it go from 8.30 to 10.30 again? Or they have violin lessons. And then before lunch, they have all kinds of physical activities like uh, taekwondo or some kind of like drumming or some kind of, you know, thing. And then they break for lunch for two hours. Two hours is not too bad. Um, and then there's uh, various activities in the afternoon. <laughs> there's even a section for feng kong. Feng yeah, kong, but later, like later he says uh, yeah, that yeah. he would like people to give him Philidity. recommendations on how to fill in those so two hours gosh. on Monday and Tuesday. So feng kong basically oh, means Thursday. to like veg out or just like you know let your mind wander. Blank we'll, out. We'll gather, as the old people would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then there's French lessons. Holy smokes. French lessons, tennis lessons, uh, swimming, golf, golfing, they've also golfing on the weekends, hip hop. They've also scheduled sleep, which is very generous of them. <laughs> 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 I don't know. It's scheduled in there. Okay. Okay. That's it. Uh, so Monday through Friday, actually uh, Saturday, Sunday, sometime in the afternoons are all packed. Yes. Right. And um, he says that uh, he actually scheduled in, you know, for example, fun cone, time to blank out, mm -hmm. uh, think, or you know, maybe sports, uh, so that the kids can relax their brain a little bit between studies. And some of the, I guess you can call them trolls, or just people who are on the internet start Concerned to citizens. Concerned <laughs> citizens on the internet uh, start to, you know, make accusations, you know, um, that maybe you're trying too hard to, I don't know, um, make your kids work too hard, or maybe just project your expectations for yourself onto your kids. Mm -hmm. So here's what I want to ask you guys. Do you think this is too much? Because we're talking about summer vacation, right? Summer vacation is a thing that we have all been taught to, you know, get used to. Like there's there are three months every year you get to relax a little bit, but for some parents or two months, I don't know, mm -hmm. depends. Um, I usually have a third month. 
playing, I, playing I don't remember. Go, not going to school. <laughs> I don't remember. That was too we long had, ago. I think I had two and a half to three months yeah. of not going to yeah. school. Okay. Right. So maybe your parents would be thinking like, oh, uh, well, I go to work every day of the year. I mean, I don't have quote-unquote summer vacation, yeah. so you shouldn't either. And maybe you could fill that two months with some activities. Now, what do you think? That's just That's just this person projecting their frustrations onto the kid. Okay, right? Okay. It's like, how come this kid gets to have all this time off and I don't? I'm just going to fill their day up with stuff so they can, you know, get it is. I am, uh, I'm going to say right now, I am wholeheartedly opposed to this. Okay, that's Leslie. Okay, okay. I would like to say in defense, not, to, not a, maybe not of this parent in particular, but the problem with parents having to work all the time and then kids having summer vacation is that you need child care. You cannot just mm-hmm. leave your, you know, three to five year old at home with nothing to do because... That's illegal. So <laughs> you do have to schedule these kinds of activities so that they're Someone's somewhere looking supervised. After them. Yeah. Right. There is a legal issue you have to consider. Right. So parent, uh, Nancy's speaking for the parent as well. Oh, yeah. Philip, what do you think? I, I think, you know, there's obviously something to be said for having a healthy balance. Um, again, I agree with Nancy wholeheartedly there. But also I think you need to have time as children, especially. I mean, play is, ver- is also developmental. It's not just doing nothing. Having time to be with your friends, learn how to socialize, Mm. learn about yourself with your own mind instead of having so much input all the time. I mean, these are all important, important parts of development. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, Out of the four of us, I think Phil is the only one who's actually spent his childhood in North America. Is that right? Uh, I spent most of my childhood in Canada, too. I never went to cram school. What about you, Leslie? I was there from until I was... Like, yeah, 13 years old. Oh, okay. So, okay, this could uh, go for all three of you. Do you think it is important to have time to, you know, I don't know, let you find out about things that you like to do after work or after school? Okay, I got a couple couple of things to do, like, to talk about here. Um, When I was a kid, what would happen is you get off at 3 at school. And then um, what really frustrated me, because Tuesdays was my day to learn Chinese. Thursday was my math day. Saturday was my violin day. (laughs) And you see, you guys are laughing at that. But the thing is, what boggles my mind now, what frustrates me more than anything is in my adulthood, I'm just like, I got so burnt out on that when I was a little kid that I didn't go through with it. I was just so glad to be done with it. Mm -hmm. But now I'm kicking myself in the face for not like going through with more violent I understand I'm kind of the opposite there was nothing for me to do out where I lived so now I'm looking back saying like why why couldn't I have had a bit of a more uh, rich upbringing I mean I had a lot of fun I you know I have lots of good memories of uh, playing on the trampoline and and like milking cows and goats actually Um, you had goats too (laughs) we didn't have cows we had Oh, you didn't? Okay. Anyways. Riding um, horses. Yeah, and you know, I mean, these are all good things to look back on, but um, there's some things that I wish I could have experienced, and it would have been nice to feel like I had some direction, you know what I mean? So I think I might be the happy medium. I did not have a perfect childhood, but I have Asian parents, and I'm Asian, so we did do, like, piano lessons and math Mm -hmm. lessons. God, those were awful. Um, But I lived in Canada where people... (laughs) back then did not have cram school uh so i i did the lessons but i also had a lot of time to like after school you throw your backpack into your room and then you run out and you go ride your bikes or go dig in the mud so i think i have a happy balance i am like the only happily well-balanced person in this room (laughs) every one of y'all disturbed i need to i need to qualify this before my mom leaves an angry comment I did do Go activities. Ahead. I mean, yeah. I started a lot of things and quit a lot of them. I did mm-hmm. Penny Whistle, which is like a recorder. Uh, I did saxophone. I was in the Air Cadets. Um, I, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, uh, they were far away from my home for a lot of things, and oh. I just lost interest really fast. I've been in the Air Penny Cadets. Penny Whistling? I cannot imagine <laughs> that you would lose yeah. interest in Penny Wow, whistling. Nancy's just Miss Sincerity <laughs> today, isn't she? Right. Today, so for someone who grew up without all of these things, uh, you hope that you would have, you could have had more, Phil. And then for someone who grew up with a lot of it, Leslie, you wish you could have had less. I'm the best. Seems <laughs> like grass is always greener on the other side. I mean, mm. it is, it is. But, like, I... Uh, I'll, I'll say these things have had lasting effects on me. I learned violin for about seven to eight years. Mm. Wow. And that stuff really sticks with you. I haven't touched a violin maybe in a decade at mm. this point, but I did learn for seven to eight years. And I had a chance to kind of uh, handle violin in, in recently, and I was just like, oh, I don't even know what I'm going to be doing. Mm. But something just kicked in mm. when I picked up that violin. I could All of a sudden, I could read all this music. I was like, okay, here we go. 
So well, it does give you an advantage sometime. Yeah, but know. like, I'm not a violinist, you know? Well, if you're a li- violinist, seven or eight years is not enough. No. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But when you're going through another course in your life, th- sometimes these, you know, experiences, they come into mm-hmm. use or, sometimes. Or certainly an appreciation of music and a basic understanding. At least that. understanding. That's yeah. true. And then, you know, but it came back to like, if I didn't get so burnt out on this on such a young age, mm. like if I don't have to worry about that and school, Maybe, maybe it could be some little more substantial. Maybe if it was just, just violin and not violin and math and yeah, yeah, yeah. And everything. Mm-hmm. It could be in the back of my head, and I could appreciate it instead of just being like, "Oh God, violin." You know what? My mom's solution to me not wanting to play piano at the age of like twelve was she got me to play jazz a lot because oh, in yeah. jazz, a lot of times you don't need to keep like track of timing, and yeah. I wasn't very good with the. The, like the hardcore piano skills mm. so she's like you could just get the notes right and you can play however you want and that was our solution to that <laughs> uh, but we should ask our interns now who had the most horrific childhood please raise your hands no this is going to turn into a competition right we promise you not to tell anyone your names in case your parents are listening but who's actually had you know one of those like 12 hour days here or maybe a Come 13 on. hour these kids were just looking at the schedule earlier. It's like, oh, that's not so bad. Yeah, now right. want to open their mouths. Come on. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have put it that way. Now they're hesitating. I know. Put, but put, your, put your hands up if you went to cram school after class. Okay. Yeah, Two, four, three, four. Four out of five. Four out of five. Four out of five. Yeah. Um, what time does it usually go until? Seven o'clock. Seven p.m. Seven p.m. And you would start the day at school at what? Eight? Seven thirty? So that's it. 8.30 to 5. Okay. okay. What do you do but for some dinner? 7 to 7.30. 7. You, you eat and then you go to cram school. One of our interns <laughs> told me this morning that she would go till like 9 p.m. Like How she would go to school in the morning and come back home at 9 p.m. When I was going to school in Taiwan, it would be a, a total like 13, 14 hour day. Mm. I would have to, school starts at like like 8 o'clock mm-hmm. and then I wouldn't be able, allowed to leave my classroom until 9.30. So you get off a of class at around 5.30, eat dinner and then from like Six to nine thirty, you're in there doing your homework and, but and what studying. What do you do for dinner? I mean, they like they'll you bring a lunch box, or, or they'll they order. They'll oh, yeah. Or seven eleven. Okay. Yeah. I Sorry. Just left when I finished homework. Sometimes I would always leave at seven because I was at ten. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, well, actually, we we do want to put put them on the mic uh, after this short break. And by the way, you listeners, if you have anything to share, please do join us on Facebook at the Facebook Live Session and uh, just simply t- uh, leave your stories in the comment section. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. We're ICR. It's a, it's a question and answer won't work if we're, if we're not physically on this. 你剛剛是不敢講嗎還是真的沒有還是真的沒有麥克風就好了對啊就是卡死打你就站到菲律賓邊我現在還會被打哦 says plus plus wholeheartedly opposite to Boom. so he's against it just like Leslie who's running out of the room uh, Beryl Wu says it depends maybe his kids feel cool and energetic to learn them all I guess you have to kind of like think about what your kids want to well, I mean that's a, one of the people in this thing that we read they said you know what does your kid want and if the kids like that then of course it's fine yeah, I think like a lot of activities in there are fun though. yeah they would be fun as long as you can adjust I wouldn't want to do this you would? I would. Yeah, I would. Some of them I might skip. I would skip the French and the math. <laughs> I'd skip the math. French I would do. Yeah, I there's know. board games. Yeah, no, I saw that one. Yeah. Board games are fun. Yeah. But, but this still means that this person is organizing most of the time. And I recently read an article that said you should let your kids be bored. Like, don't give them any stimulation. They should, like, creativity. use their ima- imagination yeah. and creativity. Yeah. yeah. And they also need to learn how to manage their own schedules. I mean, again, we don't know how old this kid is, right? Yeah. yeah. For these kids, yeah. Yeah. Maybe... 12? Yeah, if you're 12, you could start to organize your schedule a bit. Mm. And then Wang Wei Ling says, All is fine, only if kids are allowed to express free will and opt out. So, like, she's pointing... Yeah, she's or maybe they could, they maybe they could pick one or two that they say, like, veto, I really don't want to do. Mm. You know what I mean? So the problem is, if you do this, like, having... 
a regimen like this, your kid might grow up to never know how to say no to things that people, you know, project on them or impose on them. Yeah. Ooh. And then Michelle. Or just they might be too strongly opposed to it all the time. Right. And then Michelle here is saying on Facebook Live, but the kids these days in Taiwan don't feel they can express themselves. So maybe that comes That's from it. like, yeah. you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, having yeah. their schedule set for them. Okay, so, but the people who are criticizing, here's the thing, the people who are criticizing is, like, are your kids also going to cram school, but just maybe not during summertime? Because if, if your kids are going to cram school until 9 p.m., then you have no right to criticize this guy for just wanting his kid not to just waste their life away for that few, two months. Can you not go to cram school in Taiwan? If all of your kids' friends are going to cram school, and you're kind of competing against each other for, you know, a spot in a university, okay, you get away with nothing now? Here's the problem. Here's where, I, here's where I see the problem is, at this point, we're talking from the parents' perspective. Yes. Nobody has been asking what these kids want, right? This is where I have such a big problem with this, because this dad's just like, oh, I know what's best for these kids. We're going to shotgun everything. You don't know that he did that. You don't know if his parents, I mean, if his kids said yes or no. Yeah, I think when you're younger than high school age. But maybe he did ask them. I just, I just wish he'd just pick one thing, because it's just... It's that thing where you just shotgun everything. I have a big problem with that. Who can I interview for the first question? How bad was the worst year of your scheduling? <laughs> like how bad did it get? And I won't say, I won't say names. You could talk a little deeper to pretend like you're not your father's daughter if you want, <laughs> or your dad's son. <laughs> and then the second question is uh, Do you have to go to cram school to compete? to compete? If you don't go to cram school, you can't compete with the rest of the class, right? Yes, yeah. Or you can just say my friend. <laughs> Yeah? <laughs> who wants, okay, so who wants to talk about their friend's schedule? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. How? Oh, how? I'm sorry. I'm not going to get up. Oh, the Zango I don't on the island i like it on icrt all right welcome back to the midday show we're going through real talk right now our friday special today's topic is about cram school maybe extracurricular activities like learning the violin the piano uh, and others and also about how crazy the schedules can get for kids especially in asia now we have nancy philip and leslie here hello guys Hi. 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 <laughs> oh, sorry, the mic is not in front of me. And also we have all of our interns whose name I shall not say right now because some of them might not want to get in trouble with their parents. <laughs> okay, so I have someone sitting right next to me. And I got to say, by the way, ICRT's Battle of the Bands is around. And Yay! for people who can actually go through the Taiwanese school system while learning to play the guitar very well or the drums very well, I, I got a lot of respect for these guys or girls. Uh, so let's ask uh, one of our interns, or most of our interns, um, how crazy did your craziest scheduling get, or the year of your craziest <laughs> what scheduling? Crazy stories have you heard? Or yes, what, uh, yeah, which one of your friends had one of these crazy scheduling? Anyone want to share with us? What does it look like? Well, I didn't really have a crazy schedule, but I would just go to cram school every day after school in fifth grade. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for how, like, the whole entire fifth grade or for a few years? From fifth grade to sixth grade. Okay, and cram yeah. school would last to About what? About, like, five o'clock to nine o'clock. After a whole day of school, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's still quite a lot. Five o'clock in that? Can like, you describe what you did in those Okay. Days? 
Well, like growing up, I wasn't really good at math because I studied uh, mostly in Hong Kong. I went to a British school, so I know a lot of students in Taiwan, they're really good at math. And so I needed additional help. And so I would have all these math tutors over, but many of them left because they like I just couldn't get it. So they started going to cram school. And I was like a really naughty student. I would like hit hit the boys, you know, like talk oh back, talk back. To <laughs> well done. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes I would talk back to the teachers when I got frustrated for not understanding the concept. So okay. like one day in sixth grade, I remember it was like sleeping time at local school you have like, Ooh, Shoma. Yeah. and then I received a phone call from the manager of my pr cram school and he said oh you can't come here anymore oh <laughs> because, like because you misbehaved so yeah, much and you're letting all of our teachers go home late oh because you know, I had to stay until I finished all my work oh my goodness <laughs> I I am impressed by you now <laughs> That's kind of, okay, yeah, I see, but, you know, not being good at math, let's start with that, of course, is uh, being in a certain school system, there are certain expectations, like you have to be at a certain level of math. Yeah. So our next question to one of you interns is, do you feel like you have to go to cram school in order to compete with the rest of the, ch you know, like students in your class? And if you didn't, you would just, you know, get dropped out. Anybody? Are you guys just naturally good at math, every one of you? Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, I think that we don't need to go to Korean school because when I was a child, um, the only class I took uh, was swimming class yeah. because I told, to m I told my mom that I want to learn how to swim, uh -huh. so she sent me to learn swim to learn swim. But um, be honestly, be honestly, I think that even though I didn't go to the Korean school, I still beat all most of my classmates <laughs> mm. um, yeah let me also ask you like be honest do you think you are smart though ah uh, no but you don't think you're smart <laughs> so you mm. think an average iq can actually get you through taiwanese school system without cram school yes really uh, okay because i think uh speaking of academic performance um even though i didn't uh went to a cram school i can still beat my classmates because most of my classmates, they went to Korean school for hanging out, uh, hang uh, to uh, making friends. Okay. That's okay. their main, uh, uh, main goal. Do you think that happens a lot? They just go there to, you know, kick it and relax? Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. They're not really yeah. studying. They're not really studying. Okay, so cram school has become a place for parents to throw their kids into when they are still at work, Wait, I suppose. Are you still, are you still swimming right now? Are you still swimming right now? No, <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot how to swim. You forgot how to swim? <laughs> no, you don't forget how to swim. I didn't, I, was, I didn't swim for a summer, but I forgot now. Okay, okay. Got a little cocky, this guy. <laughs> but I agree, I agree. It must be happening. A lot of kids are probably going to cram school to just kick it, hang out with their friends, and they're not actually learning there. That is possible, right? And that uh, because they're going to, they don't, that they're going to cram school afterwards, so they won't, they probably won't, like, uh, paying attention in class at school yeah so they're yeah. not learning anywhere because they got to spend another four hours in cram school anyway why am i listening to the teacher right yeah. now but during the day okay that's so that's actually got negative and adverse effect on uh, your kid's education leslie you were going to say something you want to step to the mic yeah i just or i think have the mic step to you i think there's a little difference between cram school mm -hmm. and these extracurricular activities that we're talking about Cram school, oh no, Nancy, you and I, we've taught in cram schools before. Yeah. Phil, Phil, Phil also. Uh, so the three of us have been taught in, <coughs> taught in cram school. What do you think the efficacy of, cram our, school. yeah, our, of cram schools are? Like, do you think like you really made a difference or do you not? Do you... Like a percentage-wise? Uh, I think for the most part, maybe not. But for the kindergarten class, actually, my... My biggest achievement, the thing that made me feel the most proud of mm -hmm. my one year as being a cram school teacher, was um, <laughs> that when I got these kindy kids, they were five years old, mm -hmm. and some of them couldn't even get the alphabet right, and when I left, some of them were reading books by themselves. Oh, so okay. I, well, I, there, was some def there was some improvement, for sure. Okay, okay and then I just want to point out, we uh, on our Facebook Live, we have Michelle, and she, is a, she says, I'm a cram school teacher. Uh, they are frequently not enjoying it, <laughs> but she also says, Taiwan can stand to study European work and school ethics. Yeah. Chako-san says, I wonder everybody isn't busy with doing school assignments during summer vacation? Besides, doing these assignments still need to go to lessons and cram school, that's too much.
Yeah. Different okay. opinion. Okay. Okay. Leslie, back to you. Um. No. And and this is this just goes back to my thing, man. I just don't think. How old did do you know how these how old these kids are? Um. Uh. You mean on this? Yeah. Sheet? Uh, this on this kid sheet. is, I think, about twelve or thirteen. Twelve to thirteen. Yeah. I don't think any twelve to thirteen year old would willingly go to, uh, what's that called, ballroom dance class. Well, okay, okay. First off, one more thing. One more thing about cram school and you asking about efficacy. Okay, yeah. Uh, I was like our first speaker uh, interview or, or uh, intern speaker. I was terrible at math. I still am. Mm -hmm. you, you know how sometimes I can't even calculate someone's age when I'm talking about their birth year. I gotta do it for show. you, man. Um, I went to math cram school, and right now the only thing that I remember that really still benefits me somehow from that cram school is remembering all of the prime numbers from zero to one hundred. That's the only thing that wow. that school ever did to me, so I can impress people with how I can recount prime numbers anytime I want. But like, how this that yeah, has that has that ever come up? Has that ever come up? Like you were at a trivia night and be like, the winning person needs to name all prime numbers from one and to one hundred. And I can only do it in Chinese. I'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> and. But what does that really do for you, you know? Okay, anyway, back to Leslie. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. I think our most uh, uh, we're most concerned with uh, this kid who's got to put up with this schedule. <laughs> was he ever asked by his dad, yeah. do you want to do this? Yeah. And uh, if kids gr are raised without ever being asked these things, then they will never learn to speak up for themselves. Mm -hmm. And then they will just take more and more and more mm -hmm. and think that that's the natural way to go. Okay. okay. Yes, um, Philip. But there are some kids, and I think just people in general, that if you don't give them any push, they're not going to do anything at all. Right? So, I mean, you got to, again, go, yeah. you got to find a balance. That's the other side of uh, the argument. Okay, we did uh, ask our international um, uh, audience uh, what they think of uh, this schedule, and uh, there is this uh, male uh, from Germany, a 41 year old, says, My wife is Taiwanese. Uh, during summer, uh, she forces our daughter to play the or to learn the piano. One day, I got off work, went home, I saw her playing uh, "All to Joy," uh, but she was crying while she was playing it because, well, she did not enjoy doing that. So he thought that was kind of funny and uh, uh, made her made him a little uh, upset at the same time. Um, and uh, we have uh, American, uh, who is 30-year-old here in Taiwan, says, uh, during summer vacation one time, I was uh, doing overtime until 10 p.m. I was at the bus stop waiting to go home, and there were a whole lot of students waiting for me. I thought they had an event, and then I found out that it's like that every day. They don't get off cram school until 9.30 or 10. Pretty crazy stuff. I'm not going to finish this whole thing. Uh, Should I finish the whole thing? Do you? Uh, I'm just I'm just saying like have you guys ever there, there was this big thing about the tiger moms back in the day like the the Yale ba, yeah yeah the, the the Yale professor who wrote her own autobiography it said the ode of the of the tiger mother and she got slammed so much because it reminded me of this first entry where this uh, she was talking about how she made her daughter sit there for eight hours mm -hmm. like practicing a song until she got it and then I'm like okay sure your daughter can play this song flawlessly that's fine. But what kind of mental damage are you doing to her by like abusing her like that and making her cry? You know, well, I just I this is this is the kind of thing that goes through my head, man. I don't know, maybe because I have a lot of trauma and I can relate <laughs> or I just this is this is where I go. I think I, I think about the kids first. Like maybe maybe parents know best, maybe. But at the same time, to what extent do th should these kids get a say in what they get to do. Leslie, I feel like if I had a kid mm -hmm. and we're still friends then, mm -hmm. my kid's going to be like, I want to go to Uncle Leslie's house. I don't want to <laughs> stay at home. This is crazy. He doesn't make me do things like this. Yeah, it's always this kind of mad. uncle who's always like single and like crazy <laughs> and living in a shack. All right. Thanks, Joey. Uh, we also have Sam Wu on Facebook live, and he says, I never went to cram school. I learned the things I am interested in by myself. I think that there are some benefits a kid can get from cram school. It depends. And then Jacob Lee says, I wish I can talk on the phone with you guys. Oh. We have a phone line, Jacob. Two eight five two two eight two eight. So you can call in if you want. But uh, I think we have to wrap things up right now. Uh, so any concluding remarks from you guys? What do you think of today's uh, discussion? Did we get anywhere? Did we learn something new? Okay. I, I, I'm going to extend an olive branch to what Nancy and Philip said. All right. Maybe if my mom didn't push me to do violin or Chinese or math, Oh no, Wait, what's left after violin, violin, Chinese, and math? What's left? Wait, aren't those basic skills you're supposed to? Like, no, I'm saying like if I didn't, if I wasn't forcing these extra, extra things, uh -huh. I may not have the residual 
talents that I have now from what I said with the violin. Uh -huh. However, I will not deny that doing that for such a prolonged period of time, getting forced to do it, I, I started relating that to pretty negative feelings and I got burnt out to it. So I want to say between the ages of 12 to 15, I had a pretty negative idea of what math was like, of what violin was like, and what Chinese was like. And it was such a pain to learn it. Mm. You see, if you get the minute you burn out on that, you immediately, immediately destroy any possibility of this being in your future because the crucial moments where you're supposed to develop it, you don't. I'm looking for consistency. Pick one thing, go with it, all right? Don't shotgun your kids into these things because then mm -hmm. they're just going to learn to hate it. And that mental block may actually make you perform less uh, or even worse in those fields, yeah. basically. Nancy, anything? Uh, oh, my God. Without um, hitting <laughs> Leslie across more the trauma, face? More trauma for Leslie. Um, I, I, I do agree with Leslie in that, you know, if you make something into a negative kind of a connotation, then you're, that's going to stay with the kid for a long time. But I would also say, like, children, you know, go through a lot of different interests. And so it would be hard to pick one thing and be consistent with it because they just, you know, want to try a lot of different things. So I would say, I would say balance is key. Mm, okay. okay. Philip. Your last chance to speak. Um, I'm going to quote my grandmother and say everything in moderation. So I mean, <laughs> relaxation in moderation, pushing in moderation, everything in moderation. Okay, so balance basically for you and Nancy is the answer. All right, uh, but one last reminder. If you are someone who has been pushed through uh, violin courses, piano lessons, guitar lessons, then uh, make sure you give yourselves the chance to shine this year at ICRT's 11th oh, Battle yeah. of the Band. Nice. Nice. Uh, we're going to uh, be, of course, taking your uh, applications and your demos right now. Go to our website, www.icrt.com.tw. That's our Real Talk for today. Nancy, Leslie, Philip, and all of our interns, thank you so much. Sure. Thank you, thank you Joey. Uh, we'll take a, uh, take a short break. We'll be right back. Hello, handsome and gorgeous. Thank you for watching our video. If you like more general shenanigans or artist interviews, please make sure you click to the next video, but also make sure you subscribe to us by pressing the bell button down here because we like to tell you more about fun stuff coming up.